Formula E. And we're now at Formula E. So, so can I now call? Uh, that's it, yeah. Straight on to here? Yeah. Can I now call Councillor Caddy to speak? Okay. No. Let's go from the top. Right, so I must ask you, Councillor Cook. Ask right, can I firstly ask Councillor Cook to, re to move reception of report number two and paragraph ten? Formally moved, Madam Mayor. Yes. Yes. Okay, there's a reference up amendment. There is a reference up amendment on formulary paragraph that is set out on page 107 of the Council agenda. Can Councillor Anderson and Speck now move and second the reference up amendments in their names? I moved the reference up. It wasn't moved by anyone else from the other side of the hall. And Councillor Speck. Councillor Speck. Speck. Seconded. Seconded. Right, Councillor Caddy. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I love Battersea Park. I go there regularly with my two kids. We visit the zoo, play in the open spaces, go to the fireworks, and enjoy all of the activities that it offers. So I really didn't take this decision to continue to hold Formula E in the park lightly. I got a huge amount of correspondence on the issue and I weighed very carefully the arguments for and against before making my decision. So I do find it a little frustrating that the opposition seem to be trying to make out that there's something unbelievable or untoward in that decision. I can quite understand that they don't agree with my position, but people disagree on very many things with both sides holding perfectly reasonable opinions. And until very recently, they also held the view that this event was suitable for the park. Public parks belong to everybody. They need to be protected and cared for. But this doesn't mean that they can't be enjoyed in a wide variety of ways. And I think few people here would say that events like the fireworks, fun runs, jubilee celebrations, food festivals and concerts should never be held in our parks. These events encourage new visitors and allow people to enjoy new experiences. The really important thing is that they don't damage, cause permanent or serious damage to the fabric of the park, and that they are well run, well attended and enjoyed. Formula E was a major international sporting event, well publicised and televised. Thousands of people attended, with 9,000 from this borough alone. Many people enjoyed the event and left feedback to that effect. For me, one of the most memorable comments was from a local resident, and, and it was highlighted in the report. For £5 a day, I attended both the Saturday and Sunday Formula E event and had a spectacular time both days. People were so friendly. There were families with children everywhere. The report on the event detailed the damage to the park, all of which was minor and repairable. The event ran with no accidents amongst the spectators or during the setup and derig, although clearly there were areas where the setup and organisation could be Im improved. But far from trying to whitewash over these, the report clearly outlines them all and the mitigations that can be made in the future. A health and safety expert was employed to help make sure that things ran smoothly and to specifically pick up learning points from. Now, of course, I accept that there are a large number of residents opposing a, a repeat of this event. But to say that they are somehow a majority in the borough is just misleading. Those who signed the petition represent a tiny percentage of the borough as a whole. The survey the council conducted was never intended to be a referendum, and we don't govern by referendum. We always expected that the people who were unhappy with the event were more likely to take part and give feedback but actually it's really important to get that feedback so that we can learn and, sh and help shape and improve the event in the future. I've avoided talking about money so far, but I do think that that forms a crucial part of the picture. We have to save tens of millions of pounds over the next few years. And this is in the context of us already having made savings of over 100 million. We really do need to think about how we continue to fund our precious open spaces. And the amount that the council have pledged to spend on the park itself, 200,000 a year, 
can bring some incredible and long-lasting improvements to the park, which just wouldn't be possible otherwise. And there's obviously a further amount which can be used to support other areas of the Council's budget, and this could avoid some of the cuts that would otherwise have to be made. As a resident and as a taxpayer, not just as a councillor, I want that money for, it, for improvements to the park and to help out the rest of the borough, but absolutely not at any cost, which has been suggested. I believe that the damage to the park was minimal and it can be reduced even further in future years and also that lots of people enjoyed this pioneering event. I completely understand the point of view of those opposed to the event and I really do sympathise with them, but I also respectfully disagree with them, so I would urge you not to support this motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. From my perspective, this debate goes beyond the issue of electric cars racing around a Grade 2 listed park. It goes beyond the Heritage Impact Assessment Report, which concluded it is unacceptable to restrict use of and access to the park over a three-week period. It even goes beyond the question of whether it is appropriate for a council in the 21st century to be associated with the so-called family event, which uses bikini-clad grid girls. For me, this has become an issue about local democracy and people's faith in the members elected to represent them. At last month's Community Services Committee meeting, the question of whether to invoke the Prey Clause was presented as a decision that involved weighing up the disruption caused by the event against the financial benefits and the role of the borough in promoting green technology. On the financial benefits, well, we can't really assess this as the revenue received by the council is subject to commercial confidentiality. We have no clear commitments on how this money will be spent and in terms of the wider impact on the local economy, the only evidence we have is anecdotal. As for the promotion of green technology, the assertions here to be, appear to be tenuous at best and a complete falsehood at worst. Even the council officers concluded that this cannot be called a green event. It is perhaps little wonder then that the residents overwhelmingly sided with the view that the costs far exceeded the benefits. So let's review the local opposition event to the event in numbers. 400 residents wrote directly to the council to complain about the event. 550 contributed to a Facebook page. Nearly 3,000 residents signed a local petition set up by Save Battersea Park. A Wandsworth Guardian poll showed that 86% of reader responses opposed Formula E's return. And of the 1,366 respondents to the Council's own consultation, 62% opposed Formula E's return. The committee report was succinct in its conclusion that a clear majority of respondents do not want to see Formula E as an annual event in this park. If this was not compelling enough, Council officers estimate that 150 residents came to observe the decision made by the Community Services Committee meeting last month. This was an unprecedented situation where observers had to sit in two overspill rooms, including this very chamber. All five of the excellent deputations made at the meeting by local residents, associations and community groups were all opposed to Formula E's return. There is very little doubt that the decision to allow Formula E to return is at odds with public opinion. This leads Jan Littlewood, a member of the Battersea Park Action Group, to reach the following conclusion. Democratically speaking, every local interest group and a clear majority in every poll and consultation has proven to be against the event returning to the park. If Formula E gets voted through, we will need to start asking serious questions about the leadership structure and democratic integrity of Wandsworth Council. Councils consult their residents for a reason. They receive petitions for a reason. They invite deputations for a reason. That reason is very simple, to listen and respond to what people have to say. It is time we listen to Wandsworth residents and take action to stop the return of Formula E. I therefore urge members to vote against the paragraph. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, I hope Councillor Cousins and Councillor Jones are listening because they don't always uh, catch what I have to say. Uh, and I'm pleased if they are because at the meeting last month we agreed that Formula E should return to Battersea Park. We listened gratefully to Councillor Cousins as he praised the Council for its imagination and creativity in attracting events such as Formula E to the borough, but also to the objection of the petitioners he represented. We listened carefully to five deputations as they articulated their concerns. We listened to Professor Eakins agree with me that Formula E was about reducing future carbon emissions and couldn't be carbon neutral itself. We listened as he expressed support for Formula E, but not if it took place in his local park. We listened sympathetically to park users, including the old, the infirm, vulnerable or blind, as they explained how disruption to the park affects their lives. We listen to officers and to enable, explain under questioning from both sides how disruption can be limited and difficulties can be mitigated. Uh, we listen to the list of benefits the park could enjoy with £200,000 a year of Formula E funding. Uh, we listen as officers set out the financial implications to the borough of not continuing to the event. Uh, we listen to Labour councillors explain their change of heart. We listen to protesters heckling. And finally, we listen to people telling us we weren't listening. But let's be clear, listening to something is not the same as agreeing with it. But we did agree on so many things. We agreed that damage to the park should be avoided or repaired quickly when unavoidable. We agreed that closure of the park should be minimised over the set-up and clear-up stages. That signage needs to be better, that health and safety is a priority, that noise should be reduced and that helicopters shouldn't be hovering around the neighbourhood on race weekend. We also agreed that, regrettably for some, hosting the event simply would not ever be acceptable. It is all a far cry from the decision over a year ago when Labour and Conservative councillors agreed to host Formula E. Or is it? What has changed? We all knew some local residents didn't want it to take place. They still don't. We all knew that there may be problems with hosting the event. There were problems, and they were, need to be dealt with. We all knew that the potential revenue for the borough and the park, this has been realised and is set to continue. We all hoped that this would be a popular event with an excellent atmosphere. And so it proved, with nearly 60,000 spectators, thousands from within the borough. When the decision was made in 2014, right up to the aftermath of the races, Labour councillors tweeted enthusiastically about the event. Councillor Anderson said it was a great opportunity. Councillor Jones welcomed the advance of green technology. Councillor Carpenter encouraged locals to enter ballots for tickets. And Councillor McKinney celebrated the victory of a racer from Roehampton. At the meeting last month, Councillor Speck spoke movingly about the residents she had spoken to who enjoyed it, who wouldn't normally get the opportunity to attend a world-class sporting event on their doorstep at such a low price. She spoke of the fact that these people can't organise into an effective lobby and their voices aren't easily heard. Only one thing has changed since we agreed Formula E. A, a, a significant protest has been mounted by angry residents and councillors have faced a powerful campaign of very articulate objections. Conservative councillors have withstood this barrage, whilst Labour has neatly stepped to one side. Was it cowardice or calculation? Labour councillor described the report into Formula E as damning. However, one of the deputations described it as biased. My view is that the report was thorough. It covered every expressed objection. It quantified the problems and it offered solutions. It cannot reasonably form the basis of Labour's change of heart. Labour councillor also failed to address the consequences of a decision to pull out. We all had the gold papers with the financial implications of not going ahead. We all know that the borough needs to make savings. Labour councillors didn't even consider this. They offered no suggestions. They offered no suggestions how the council can meet this shortfall. They made no suggestions of where they would make savings necessary without this revenue. They didn't seem to grasp that this wasn't a revenue neutral decision. I'm sorry to make a partisan point. This was not a partisan matter until Labour withdrew its support. It would have been great if the positive manner in which the original decision was made had continued. We would welcome Labour's suggestions on addressing residents concerned. 
The party of the community could have made suggestions such as arranging volunteers to take vulnerable people to one of our other parks on days the Battersea was closed, uh, etc. Formula E could be a great community event, but Labour has chosen not to be involved. Instead, they are telling residents that in other parts of the borough that they wish to cut services important to them in order to subsidise Battersea Park and keep it clear for the lucky few who live near. I think that's a terrible shame. Uh, Madam Mayor, may I catch your eye and make a contribution to this debate? <laughs> I, believe it's, I believe it's my right as a member. Um, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Scott mentioned uh, my congratulations to the Council for its bravery, and I, I will reiterate that. I'm happy to uh, reiterate that. I think, um, as I said at the committee, for many years this Council has often failed to perhaps be brave and bold enough to try new things, uh, to see uh, what innovations it can bring to make the lives of Wandsworth residents better. So when it is brave, it should be congratulated for being brave. Um, it should also, and I think you know, there has been some suggesting that officers have been criticised on different subjects, we should also congratulate officers. Uh, I think they saw an opportunity, they moved on it remarkably quickly in the space of two, less than two years, I think, between uh, the initial approach in 2013 and the event in 2015. Uh, they showed exemplary professionalism in helping to stage an event. I think mistakes were made and I think there are difficulties there, but they should be congratulated on that. But one of the problems about opportunism is that you need a sense of uh, value. You need a sense of vision. You need to know which of the opportunities you should take and which are the opportunities that you should pass up. So for years I would sit in meetings and talk about this and these were the same meetings where I was hearing about the dire financial situation we were in. So I'm fully aware of the council's need of money. But I would ask what's important to us? What is the thing that really we want to be defending here? What is the council's vision? And the answer came back, and I remember it very clearly because I think with reflection, this is actually the moment I became an independent. Now is not the time for vision. This was an answer when I asked the question in a meeting of this council, what is our vision? Now is not the time for vision. I can understand the logic behind it. The logic behind it is that when, when there's plenty, when there's money, we can, we can, exercise, uh, we can exercise our largesse. We can do things. We can create things. We can be a, a wonderful, benevolent council. But when times are bad, we can't do that. We don't have a vision. We don't know what we want to protect. We don't know what is important to this borough. Now is not the time for vision. And when it isn't the time for vision, it becomes the time for cozying up with developers, for screwing the motorists, for riding roughshod over residents. It comes the time that when someone turns up and says, we'd like to run an oversized scale electric in Battersea Park, it will mean closing it down for three or four weeks. It will mean a lack of access. It will mean hundreds of lorries coming in, dumping thousands of tonnes of concrete. It will mean grassing over, uh, sorry, tarmacking over grassed areas in the park. It will mean the park being closed and access being limited because of a ring of concrete and steel around the carriageways for weeks on end. That's the time when that lack of vision shows its bad side. That's the time when the opportunities are taken and people, the residents, pay the price. I think this council sometimes behaves like a business and it's very good at behaving like a business. It's very good at managing the money. Its financial control is excellent. But it should remember it is not a business. It is a public service. It's not here to promote green energy. It's not here to act as an event promoter or a venue provider for racetracks. It's not even here, Councillor Cook, and I am sorry about this, it's not here to swell your personal vote in Malaysia and Singapore, although I know that the worldwide attention from Formula E was welcome. It is here to serve the residents, and I think it has failed to do that on this occasion. Instead of listening to residents, we have belittled them. Because they came back with a view with which the Council didn't agree, we've just said, well, there's not many people talking there. Well, it's a view we agree with, of course, we'll, we'll celebrate it and we'll promote it and we'll put it on press releases and talk about it endlessly, but on this one they disagreed, so we're going to belittle them. We will say things like the support of the Friends of Battersea Park is critical to this. We need their support. But then when they turn up to a committee meeting with a deputation saying they don't support the event any longer, it no longer is as critical as it once was. And we're failing as a guardian of the park, of a Grade 2 Victorian park, which has been offered up to the highest bidder in the middle of summer, instead of being there as an amenity for local residents 
many of whom, and I think there has been some insinuation that there's an imbiism here, many of whom rely on it because they are living in estates without gardens. They are living in places that have no access to open spaces for their children to run around. So now may not be the time for vision. Possibly that's true. I would disagree. And I think it's for individual members to decide whether it is or it isn't. But surely if we believe in anything, we believe in the brighter borough. I believed in the brighter borough when I was elected in 1998. And I've matured a bit. My views have changed. Perhaps some of my idealism has been knocked out of me. But I still believe in the brighter borough. And I'd hope some of my colleagues believe in it as well and will be voting to return the park back to the people. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cousins. It saved me saying all sorts of things. I agree with so much of what you said, which is perhaps a new thing. Um, I, uh, I, I was hoping that uh, the evening would have taken a slightly different course from this, so I'm completely out of sync. But let me, having said I agree with much of uh, Councillor Cousins, just let me add a couple of points to that. Um, first of all, I don't think it is trivial, uh, far from it, um, that a matter of this importance is covered by commercial confidentiality. I've been a campaigning against commercial confidentiality and the existence of gold papers for 30 or 40 years, a very long time anyway. And I'm sure they have their place somewhere or other, as, uh, as Councillor Cook alluded to earlier. But on a question like this, it does seem to me to be begging the question a little bit in democracy and political terms. You can go to the residence of uh, Battersea Park, but it could be the whole borough, and say, uh, Take my word for it, I happen to know what the figure is and you're getting a good deal. That's asking an awful lot of the public nowadays, especially given the reputation of politicians. And you may be justified. Uh, maybe it is worth 300 million and therefore we're all uh, okay tomorrow. Or maybe it's worth nothing and we're having to pay them. Or either way, um, I think that the public deserves the right to know. and. Uh, if that's the nature of the commercial deal, then it's about time the public got their way and said, that's not good enough. We need to know. And if we did know, and if the figure was one million pound, and that one million pound saved uh, whatever it might be, then I think all of us have the right and uh, the de decency to argue the case and say, look, we're sacrificing the park for one million pound, and it's for this reason, that reason, the other reason. But we won't be asking them just to take on trust our good offices. Why should they? So that's, that's one point I'd make. Secondly, we are in financially difficult times, but don't let's kid ourselves that we're in financially difficult times just because we have to be, as some people over here have said. I've had enough of that story. It's nearly 10 years old now. It is nearly 10 years old. And how long can you start continue doing that? It is not that at all. Ask Council Lister, as he was at the time, when at the London Council's meeting in 2011, he says, it's in our interest to cut back on the role of the state. And there's no doubt the Tory party leadership in the, this country have been doing that quite well for five years and intend to do so. And this, of course, is partisan, and that's what it's about. And I just repeat further. Unless you put a stop to this somewhere or other, then the government pressures, well, we know they are. It's just going to be one thing after another. Uh, tonight, it's two children's centres. They're the children's centres that only deal with the 13th and 14th most vulnerable kids in the borough. Next year, it will be the 11th and 12th, and the year after, the 9th and 10th. And so it will go on until you get a hold of this problem and start recognizing that the public sector has a tremendous amount to contribute and isn't just damaging well, what we have here. So, just to go back a bit, I was in favor of trying this as an experiment. I agreed again with Councillor Cousins. Um, I perhaps wouldn't have put it in these terms, but it was a bold experiment by this council. Good luck to them. 
Um, and it kind of worked, but actually it worked fairly badly. Um, I went, um, and I actually didn't think it was the most spectacular experience. But I know quite a lot of people did, and quite a lot of enjoyed it. It was all right, um, but it was very limited in all sorts of ways. One of the annoying things about the park, of course, is there are too many damn trees. You couldn't see the cars because all the trees. And the logic of that is that to cut the trees down. Now, that will be really uh, successful, won't it? There's another logic. If it's so successful and we need the money, uh, therefore it's worth trying for another five years. Uh, sorry, why five? Uh, why not 10? Why not 15? Why not 20? Are we looking forward to Battersea Park being the e-racing center? And if we are, then the extension of that is, well, no, at least two weeks. I accept the running of it will probably be, get better than this year, but it will be at least two weeks in the, in the peak of summer every year. And what goes along with that? And this is not equivalent to a fireworks night, for goodness sake. Don't get that out of your head straight away. So just to say that, and also, Councillor Cook, you really have to ra ra raise your sights a little bit. You really got to stop playing this trivial stuff. Some number of consultees is only naught point of the barrow's population. We could do that on every figure in the book. And I hope even your side are embarrassed about that. 10,000 people object, but that's only whatever the figure is. The fact of the matter is, for those that are asked, the overwhelming majority were against it. And it's very silly of you and short-minded not to recognize that. Madam Mayor, <clears throat> I speak with the experience of planning and staging international rugby matches at Twickenham Stadium over a seven-year span. I know what's involved in a major event and the sequential wash-up post-match meeting to make even more improvements. I dealt with all the commercial aspects, liaising with the local authority and other community stakeholders, health and safety issues, split, split second timing on activity. I chaired community meetings abrasive at times, uh, ironing out concerns and infusing inflammatory situations, something we could learn here. So I believe I can speak with some authority and understanding. Fact, nobody gets it right first time. I believe in a conciliatory approach on Formula E. Yes, we got some things wrong at an inaugural event. It could have been better. There were some rude, unhelpful stewards, insufficient signage, some better access for disabled. Uh, these, along with others, such as noise concerns, have been identified. It's better to roll out control on areas of closure in sections of the park during the build-up and de-rig, and that will be addressed. There is room for improving the delivery, and this council has listened and will act accordingly. At the outset, consultation took place. A public meeting was held. 1,800 letters were produced informing local residents. There was a poster campaign. The committee report, a public document, was available and attracted considerable comment. Verbal, personal attacks on council officials with the, com with the constant bombardment of aggressive emailing are not helpful. These, at times, have been repetitive and misleading on fact and provided skewed misinformation to others in our community. We need better understanding and an acceptance and need to work more positively together. Consultation through a regular community forum was set up and I understand worked well, polite and cordial, even though some community members did not agree. It will continue to manage the impact and expectations. A website on the preparations was set up there were comments on the build-up to the event from regular use of the park, and I quote one. Difficulties were expressed by a lot of people not being able to take their normal route. However, with a bit of flexibility, it was always possible to walk around, to walk outside the carriageways or to walk into the centre of the park. And, after the event, a comment, but the level of damage that we feared and expected has not happened. Subsequently, it was deemed to have been a success, enjoyed by local families, 
schools and a wider London audience coming to experience a unique event. In fact, a Labour councillor reported at committee that attendees from a local estate have much enjoyed their day. Yes, there has been numerous positive feedback from many who attended. The national and international press supported the venue and reported on a lively atmosphere of positivity. Fact, 55,500 tickets were sold through Ticketmaster over the two days, and some 7,000 of which were bought by borough residents. 2,000 given away. Local pubs reported increased trade in local businesses will benefit certainly in the future. So let's not harbour on the 62% of the residents who were opposed, as suggested by Labour. It was 62% of the council survey, 847 people of the borough's population of 310,000. That is 0.27%. Of course, there will be those who continue to oppose, but consider the bigger picture, the need to have vision and share in Battersea Park. It will benefit by a further 200,000 per annum in 2016 and, in, and 2000, 200,000 in, in 2017. 600,000 over three years, 2015 to 17. This can be a great event handled with sensitivity and understanding, enhancing our great parks infrastructure through careful maintenance and sound financial support when money is tight, making improvements for the enjoyment and the benefit of future generations of Londoners. I urge you to support the motion. Thank you. The decision that the, that the Conservative councillors are about to force through is very wrong. Formula E is not the right place for being in Battersea Park. Please do not welcome it back. My views are well known. I've written a blog. I will put this speech online. But it is also disgraceful that the long-held WHIPS agreement has been overridden. And so, therefore, you're trying to talk out time for the fair deal for renters' speech. So I will give up the time for my speech and instead hope that, that there will be more time later on for the fair deal for renters motion. And I hope that the speakers following on from me will do the same. Uh, I, um... I would uh, normal to stand up when we're speaking here, Catherine. Uh, Where's this? Yeah, not, can just, you please settle down? I think we've had enough disruption everything. tonight. Can we please carry this meeting through with some respect? Uh, that, thank, thank, thank you, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm very glad that we are debating this. It's an important matter. It should have been dealt with first. Um, your whip, Labour Party's whip, I didn't think it was the most important thing and was trying to shove it to the third debate, which would be totally inappropriate. You would know, you know, you know, as well as we do, the fate of the third debate. There is not enough time. This deserves time. I know you don't like the message, but you should listen. You should listen. Uh, and I would just like to respond to Councillor Belton's uh, uh, it, on the 62%. That is a matter of fact. It is plain wrong to say that 62% of, of the borough were against this. That is a factually inaccurate statement. And that is why I felt it was important to correct it. Now, if I may continue, uh, as we've demonstrated tonight, uh, a few things are ever completely clear-cut, enjoy 100% support, or are without uh, some downside. Uh, and that especially uh, applies to new events, as, uh, as Councillor Field has just explained. Um, but look at what we got right. A uh, huge event, in, unprecedented in London, unprecedented in the borough. Our, our officers did a fantastic job and attended by 60,000 people uh, with TV coverage around the world, including Malaysia, where uh, apparently I have a personal vote, uh, even though I haven't been there for 20 years. Um, I do fully accept uh, there was a lot of disruption, and I also accept and respect that there are people uh, who do not like this event. I fully get that. Um, we will do everything we can uh, to minimise that, as we always said we would. Others uh, question the green credentials of the event, uh, and they look uh, uh, very narrowly at the event itself, 
rather than looking at the power of the message, the power of the message, the power of the message of the event, especially to young people. Um, I accept, of course, that moving concrete blocks around and the production of concrete blocks, of course, is hugely energy intensive. But when you look, would you stop interrupting me? Have the courtesy, have the courtesy, have the courtesy to listen to an alternate view. When you look at the upside of the equation, the impact we might have on air quality by encouraging the use of electric vehicles, I would argue that down the line, and this is the vision thing for Councillor Cousins, we will be very, very firmly in credit on that equation. But don't take it from me that electric cars are the way to go. Uh, we have our own world-renowned expert living in the borough who wrote in March of last year in the Huffington Post that, and I quote, the drivetrain of uh, ultra-low emission vehicles of the future will be electric. One class, I continue the quote, one class of promising electric vehicles is those driven exclusively by batteries. For example, such as Formula E cars, and that, of course, will be the focus of Formula E as the teams now compete together to produce better technology. And whether you love Formula One or you hate it, one thing it has done over recent decades is drive innovation to an incredible degree. We've already seen the events last year in Battersea Park used glycerine gen generators, no carbon emissions whatsoever, and they provided the energy for the vehicles uh, that raced. Battersea Park is not just Battersea's Park. Uh, it's not just the Borough's Park, uh, it's at least London's Park, and one could go wider. Let's look at how it's funded. The Heritage Lottery Fund put in £7.5 million about eight years ago. Uh, that money didn't come from here, it didn't come from London, it came from the entire UK. So it is fitting that not only do we have 9,000 of our own residents, we had many, many more who came from London, loads from around the country, and a lot from overseas. We've touched on funding challenges. We've got, we have already had to save 100 million pounds. We've been looking at something similar. So the fact that we can now confirm, if we go for the three years, that we've got 600 for the park itself, 600,000 pounds for the park itself, and that that is a fraction of the total event, I would say is a very big achievement. We have never before hypothecated to an individual park. So the question isn't so much, uh, and responding to Councillor Stokes, the, uh, the question isn't so much what will we spend the money on, uh, it's what service can we now protect that we might otherwise have lost. And I can do nothing better uh, than, uh, I can't reveal the figures, and I stand by that, uh, I can't do any better than Mr. Buss at OSC when he offered a spectrum of possibilities. On the one end, 12 social workers, the other end, half our libraries. And the Labour Party really want to reflect on that. Uh, that is what it is potentially worth to us. And take the example of Battersea Park. It's a heritage park. It demands continuing capital investment to maintain that precious quality. Uh, it costs us about three and a half million pounds a year to run, and we get about 3.2 million gross in. So it's a big, big shortfall. And returning to those who bear the costs, it might be argued that while the costs are borne by the whole borough and beyond, it is those living closest who enjoy the greatest amenity. Some say it's a Victorian park, and therefore inappropriate as a venue. Well, what would the Victorians have made of it? If our forebears hadn't been bold and prepared to do new things, then Bassey Park wouldn't exist, and neither would many of the wonderful buildings across our borough. Uh, they would have seen no contradiction whatsoever in embracing new technology in an older setting. Uh, just think railways or perhaps the Crystal Palace, which was built in Hyde Park to showcase British innovation. A Victorian would be bemused at their era being invoked is the reason why nothing should change. It certainly wasn't their spirit, and it shouldn't be ours. There's been much talk of silent minorities, uh, if only, I sometimes reflect. Uh, I can't help noting there's a very far from silent minority, uh, but there is a rather large silent majority, uh, and I would say the 10,000 or so borough residents who went, uh, quite aside from others who didn't go, who may well also have a positive opinion. Um, the vocal group have done a very good job at making, uh, at making their point. They do regret uh, the tone of much of the comment. Uh, sad to say a lot of it has been abusive at times. And I would question whether hounding council officers and contractors with hundreds of emails chasing daily is really, as in every day, uh, is really in anyone's interests. Um, it's natural that those who protest uh, protest uh, more loudly. Uh, but I would just like to uh, reflect on one email I've received from an elderly gentleman um, who lives in a council estate near the park. I have his permission to quote anonymously. 
Uh, he'd never before got in touch with the council, but he said he just wanted to make the point, he wrote to me and the leader, he said he just wanted to make the point that he had a great time, uh, he'd attended both days, never been to anything like it, cost him a fiver each time, uh, and he felt there was a degree of selfishness amongst those of his fellow churchgoers locally who were complaining, and he just wanted to share that. Uh, and I, I was rather touched by that, and I thought uh, I, I'll share it with permission. Um, there's been much discussion of mitigation, uh, very thoroughly covered uh, at OSC. Uh, I don't have time to go into all of it, uh, but I would just like to highlight that uh, uh, neither I nor officers would uh, tolerate any lasting damage to the park, and that has not been the case. Um, I will just mention tarmac, because that does get off, uh, mentioned uh, a lot. Um, it can, of course, all be removed at formulary expense, should we so wish. Um, but uh, what we've done is tarmac over two pitted, gravelly surfaces that are poorly drained. Uh, I've uh, had a lot of complaints over the years, and I think uh, myself that's a better surface uh, for a car park. But maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, we'll remove it. Um, turning briefly to other local benefits, I'm delighted to say uh, that uh, local schools will be more involved uh, than ever in uh, future events. We'll aim to get every school in the borough involved if they want to be. Uh, and I'm also delighted to say that a young man from one of the most deprived parts of this borough uh, has just started uh, uh, an intern uh, Inter internship at Formula E headquarters. It's a paid internship. Um, it, it's just tremendous. A uh, really fantastic start for him. There'll be more to come. Uh, and a very difficult industry to break into. Uh, and so that's, that's now happening. So to conclude, uh, this was an exciting new event, enjoyed by tens of thousands of people, well run, safe, a huge undertaking. It was brought a major international sporting occasion to the heart of London and our borough with direct financial benefits both for the park and the borough as a whole. Mr. Mayor, change is often difficult, but I would urge those with doubts to step back and consider the benefits of Formula E. I think we've been right to seize the opportunity, proud of what we've achieved from a standing start, and aim to make it even better next year, looking to the future while respecting the past. I urge support for continuation. The amendment is lost 20 to 33. 20 to 33. We, now go to the we now go to the original motion. Paragraph 10 be received as information okay. to, to a vote by show of hands. Those in favour? Same numbers, so maybe they are same, number, same numbers. Same numbers. So the motion is carried by 33 to 20. Okay, let's take it again then. Can we... So we're now on the amendment. We're on the amendment. So Can I now ask for a show of hand on the amendment moved by councillors Anderson and Speck? Those in favour. Those in favour, please raise. It is 20. I'm sorry, 21. I beg your pardon. It's 21. It's 21. Right. 21. Uh, say thank you to, count, to Councillor Critchard. Thank you very much, Councillor Critchard. And those against the motion. And those against the motion. The amendment. The amendment. So it's 32. The motion is lost 20 to 21 to 32. Um, and, so we know who. And, and is the motion the same numbers? And is the motion the same numbers then? Yes. Yes, same numbers.